All right, here we are in the final chapter of the tutorial having to do with the lesson module. And Colette and I actually learned a lot because we're not that familiar with this module, but um, it came together at the end. If you look at the edit screen, it does at this point look really complex because um, what we started to build was a content page for every rule that we were teaching around singular and plural nouns. So you can see that I have a content page here. And then after each one, we did two questions that were um, checking for understanding. And if somebody got the question correct, then they moved on. And if they didn't, um, they would be asked the question again until they got it correct. And one of the things I tried at the very end is that I did questions that were non-multiple choice. So you'll see that when I show you how this lesson module looks from the student's perspective. Now, the la um, before we go look at how this looks for a student, I wanted to let you know how we ended the lesson. So what we did is we, we made one last content page. So as somebody answered the last question or the end of our lesson, they would answer this and when they got it correct, it would bring them to what we call the summary page. So let me just show you what that summary page looks like. So you can see um, that it whatever happens there, as soon as it's the, the answer is correct, you go to the summary page. And then with this, what we did was we just put a description in there that said the end and then jump to and you choose end of lesson, which you have an option in the pull down menu at any time. And that just brings the student back to the course homepage. So that's how you do it. You create a content page and in the jump to menu in the in the singular content breakout, you choose end of lesson. So that brings us to, I'm gonna save this page. I'm actually gonna go to a different browser, whoop, it's just like magic, where I am logged into Mr. Ingham's course as Oliver Osland, who is a Hopkins um, student in the third grade. All right, so I'm gonna go down there, I'm logged in as a student, and I'm going to take this or participate in this lesson. Now he's done it a couple of times, so I click on the link, and um, it starts me kind of all over. And this is a content page, and um, I, I'm given a video to watch, so I would watch that as a student. And um, Colette and I changed this so that the only option, the only way that they can break down, because you, you certainly have the ability to let the student branch off to, into many different directions, but we have made this a very linear lesson. So the only button is learn more. And so this brings Oliver to a second content page that we created. And then again, we made this very simple and one option for branching on to the next thing which is try it. And so that brings us to the two question page to check for ans to check for understanding. So I'm gonna very quickly go through these. I'm gonna get them all right. So um, the plural form of hat is hats, I submit. Um, you don't have to, but you can give feedback. You'll, you'll notice that later in the lesson, I didn't type in any feedback for the answers, but if you do, it'll appear now and here we go, plural form of the word fan is fans. And, oh, I like that I had fannies in there as a possible answer. Okay, so then at that point I did two correct answers and so it brings me to the next content page which is the second rule for singular and plural. So I'm gonna now, I look at that and I try it again and I have two, thing, um, two um, questions to check for understanding. I'll do this one wrong. Um, plural form of fox is foxies. I click submit. Now it says try again. I put some feedback in there, would not have had to, but I'm gonna have to answer that question again until I get it right. So I say submit and we just move on to a second question. And now I'm back to, oh, I have a little bit of feedback again. So now I'm back to rule number three and the try it button will bring me to the, the questions. 
I kind of like this, the plural form of puppy. See how I did puppies? Ooh, that's funny. All right, puppies spelled that way. I got it right. Oh, I like this one too. This is the first time that I decided, okay, I am going to try a short answer instead of a multiple choice. So I had to type, actually type in the word hippies for this one. And then it brings me to a content page. I say try it. It brings me to the two um, check for understanding. And my very last question. You may remember that once I answer this correctly, it'll bring me to that last content page, which was the, um, the one that directs me to the end of the lesson. So I'm going to type in trays. And you can notice at the top that as a student, you get to see how well you're doing in the lesson. So I've, um, I've done one incorrect response. I say submit. And it tells me that I'm done with the lesson. You could put much more in there, I'm sure. And then you click on the end, and that brings you back to the home page of the teacher. So now I'm going to slide back so that you can see what it looks like from the perspective of uh, the teacher. So notice that in your editing area, you have a reports tab. So I click on that. And now I have tried this several times, logged in with Oliver, and I don't know if you remember this, but when we first set it up, um, we allowed for as many attempts as the student wanted to do. So you can see these detailed attempts, and the highest score that Oliver achieved was 88.89%. So you're going to get lots of statistics for individuals here and for um, some summary statistics as well. If, in fact, you had essay questions in there, you would have to click on the grade essays box and you could go in there and grade those manually and then the student scores would reflect um, that manual effort of yours. So um, that's what you get to see as a teacher. Now, one last thing that I wanted to let you know, um, we were having trouble because um, I was taking this quiz logged in as is Oliver or this lesson logged in as Oliver and it wasn't showing up under the reports tab and so I think it's important that I show you why. So on the side I need to get back to my settings page. That was the first thing we did when we set up this lesson and it all came down to one thing and that is I had set this to yes as a practice lesson and if you do that if you say yes as a practice lesson you get no data as a teacher under the reports tab. So I had to change this to no, and then as a result, I got that data so I could actually see how the students were doing in terms of um, their efforts. So I'm gonna click Save and Display, and that is your, um, your quick and dirty on the lesson module, which I think is one of the more advanced modules, and my suspicion is it's the type of thing because it's a little deeper and thought, more thoughtful, it's probably something that would only happen um, like at a tech camp or at a, um, you know, a curriculum writing summer opportunity or something of that nature. But the other thing to keep in mind is if somebody does write one and it's decent, um, they can be copied from one page to another. So you can feel free to contact Terry Oslin if you're interested in that. So thanks. Have a great day.